So, as we can see from this particular cycle, we extract point of view from different users. We understand the problems. There are different, 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 different problems are there. We understand all these problems. Then we select some problems. So here it is a convergent So we understand this problem and then we select these problems. Based on the selection of the problems, we select a few, then we ideate those problems. Okay? In the ideation process, we try to find the solution. Then we find the solution. Once we find the solution, we understand the process of crea creating that particular solution. So how do we create a solution? First, we create a prototype. So this is the first step in creating your, from your problem to the solution. So you create the prototype. Once you have created the prototype, you go and test the prototype of that particular product in the market or among your users. Record the outcome of your testing. What is the outcome of your testing? Are your users satisfied with your product or they want any changes? Record those changes. If they want changes, what are the changes? Whether you can do those changes in the product or not, the feasibility of that has to be checked. If those changes can be done, you observe those changes through the solution selection, come back, take their objective again, and again follow the same process. So it is a cycle which keeps on happening, and it is an iteration process. Divergent versus convergent. So divergent involves finding many possible solutions in the first stance even if some are not viable. So in the divergent process, you keep on finding new, 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 new ideas. What are the ideas you will do divergent into? There can be multiple divergent ideas. Some might be viable, some might not be viable. Depending upon what is viable and what is feasible, then you try to slow down and make those choices where you can make those as a choice. Now, when you make them as a choice, Convergent involves narrowing the available solutions to a final solution and the ability to find the correct solution to the given problem. So, divergent and convergent, they work hand in hand. Divergent gives you multiple options and multiple solutions. Convergent, what it does, it, it streamlines this entire process. It selects some of the solutions or maybe only one solution as in the case of iPhone we have seen. It has selected three different problems <coughs> into one solution where iPhone came into this world. So similarly, depending upon your product need, it will go through the process of divergence to the convergent. And this entire process is divergent and convergent thinking. Where the cycle happens in case of divergent, free flow of ideas happens. Non-linear thinking, we don't think in only one direction. We think in multiple directions to brainstorm our new ideas. Unexpected connections, so there might not be any connection because when we are thinking in non-linear way, we are thinking in multiple directions, there might not be connections as well. And we come out with the multiple ideas, that is where the divergent thinking happens. <coughs> so design thinking involves revolves around divergent thinking in the beginning to ideate many solutions and then resort to convergent thinking to zero in on the best solution. So design thinking is a process which goes from divergent thinking to convergent thinking when initially we have multiple ideas and multiple solution options, but finally we zero down into only the solution which we want to take, which is viable and feasible for our product. <coughs> so this is where the introduction and understanding of Solution-based thinking is there now. We have moved from problem-based thinking to solution-based thinking. Now we will get into the real processes of the design thinking. Thank you, kids.